In this lecture, we're going to teach you about a tool utilized in Scrum called a burndown chart. A burndown chart is a visual representation of work being completed throughout the various sprints of the project. Now, the design of this particular chart will be different depending on the tool you utilize to create it, but ultimately they show the same sort of data. On the vertical axis, we have our work, our story points. On the horizontal axis, we have our time, our sprints. And in the middle, we have two lines. The orange line is representative of what we want from a trending standpoint. For us to achieve our 120 story points in our 10 sprints, that orange line is taken into that account. This is where we need to be in order to complete that at the end of this project. The blue line is the actual. This is the work that's left remaining after that sprint is completed. So as we look at sprint zero, we're at 120 story points. Obviously, we haven't done any work yet, so 120 points as part of the project and 120 story points that need to be completed yet. As we move into sprint one, you can see that we fell behind a little bit. We were slightly behind there because our number of points that we completed was actually less than what our trend was showing. Now, this happens a lot on teams, especially new teams. When you're just forming your team together, you got to go through, you got to make sure everybody knows their role and kind of get into a good fluid rhythm for before the scrum really takes off and before you can really achieve your full team velocity in every single sprint. So this happens a lot. That first sprint, you tend to fall a little behind on that trend line just because of that. Then as we move into our second sprint, you can see we caught up a little bit. We were able to complete some additional story points and kind of catch up towards that trend. As we look to sprint three, we actually got ahead of schedule. We were able to complete more story points than what we needed to in order to achieve those full 120 story points at the end of the project, in this case, 10 sprints. Sprint four, we completed a little bit, but we didn't make much progress. Sprint five, same thing. Sprint six, same thing. And we actually fell behind because through sprints three, four, five, and six, you can see that the line doesn't really change much. We didn't really get many story points completed. As we look at sprints six and seven, we're now behind schedule and we're getting towards the end of the project. We've gone above the trend line and so we need to make some adjustments to make sure that we can get completed with this particular project in our 10 sprint timeline or look ahead to potentially adding sprints if we need to in order to get all of our work done. In sprint eight, we get back on track. We get our story points completed and now we're ahead of the trend line, heading into the final two sprints where we're able to knock it out, stay on task, on target, and complete our project on time. So as you can tell, this burndown chart is very helpful to a project team so they understand where they're at in the grand scheme of things. In a scrum project, you're so focused on that particular sprint. You're so narrowly focused, working hard to get those requirements and design, development or solution created, tested, and ready to be delivered at the end of that sprint that you're not really focusing on the big picture. So it's really easy to get lost in where the project is overall. The burndown chart was created to help give a visual representation to where you're at. That way you can make adjustments. You know that you're behind or you're ahead. You might be able to add some additional nice to have features and stay on the same task. Or maybe you can move up your delivery date and deliver that overall project value sooner. 